So in this video, I want to talk about volume three of Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. And honestly, th there's some interesting stuff in this volume. And to be very clear, when I ask a, a hypothetical question, I don't actually want the answer to it. It's just me saying, I wonder this. So I just want to be very clear on that because I always seem to get some comments where someone takes that statement and then tries and dumps like a hard spoiler in the comment section. I don't want actual spoilers. I just, again, when I'm talking, I'm wondering to myself, I wonder when this is going to happen. I wonder what's happening here kind of thing. So just want to be very clear there because one of the things that I do look forward to finding out is when Alia realizes that he can actually in fact speak Russian. Now in this volume he does speak Russian to her but only one line which is uh, chin up I believe it's uh, keep your chin up I wrote it down because I wanted to remember it and to her she just automatically assumes oh he must have learnt that line ahead of time because of the whole uh, uh, meeting or well, not so much meeting but the assembly that they were going to have where they do the kind of the welcoming and that's the big ending to this volume which is the assembly the the greetings where Alia and Yuki are doing their little greetings and kind of presenting their little argument of why they want to be the head of the student council running the show and my god am I kind of really surprised at how events played out because to me I was wondering how would he turn this around in Alia's favor? Because Yuki is very, very smart. She's got a lot of things that she's got to her advantage. And she seems very charismatic. She's got a lot of people on her side. She's very good at talking. But I do notice that she does use a lot of the stuff that I think she's... At least the way I see it is that she's got a lot of advantage because she's got a lot of experience from, from working with her brother. And because of that, she's learnt a lot of things. Now, because she, she could just be talented in general, but it's just little things. Like, for example, where he came up with different systems, and she's using that to her advantage. So he's kind of fighting an uphill battle against someone that's got some of the tools that he created when they started. So at least it, that's how I interpret it. Maybe I've interpreted it wrong, but regardless, she has the upper advantage. So how can Alia turn this in her favour? And I think it really just... For Yuki, a bit of a headspace. I mean, it's, yeah, sister's name. I, I get names always mixed up. So, yeah, she really had her eye on one specific target and then didn't realize that her brother kind of tricked her a bit. I also love the way her motivation is this idea that at the start, Alia thought it was about her dead brother and she's like, oh, no, 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 he's not actually dead. And it's just like, oh, my God. He was about to tell her too. Be like, yeah, actually, no her brother isn't dead, it's actually me, but they ended up getting interrupted. That is like one of those moments where a couple's about to kiss and someone walks in, it's like that big moment that something's about to happen and boom, it just gets thrown a head spin, so my god is this volume, this is the thing, volumes one, two and three, you really start to get these building blocks and one of the problems that some light novel series run into is as the volumes go on, things kind of just feel padded and it feels like nothing's really evolving in the story. But with this, you really do feel like things are moving forward. You really feel like you're learning more about the characters and what makes them tick and the complexities behind them, but also some of the backstory as well, particularly to do with his grandfathers, because there seems to be two. One that really doesn't like him and one that does of course, like him, which is the one that he grew up with, with the whole Russian and everything, and I love the way he just walks in, and he's just like, yeah, you want to marry my son, uh, my grandson, I was about to say son, but his grandfather, so yeah, my grandson, and I'm just like, oh my god, man, you, you, he's going to be like the ultimate wingman, just pushing, 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 but I also think that he might be the one that actually undoes, undoes um, Masa, as I'm going to shorten his name, because his grandfather would know that he knows how to speak Russian. So what happens if Alia and his grandfather are like, say like in a room talking and she just brings up something about Russian and he's just like, oh yeah, my, my grandson knows how to speak Russian. And it would just be like a mic drop moment where it would be like, Alia would be like, wait, he can? That's how I picture that scene playing out. Because I don't think it's going to be him that will do the confession of, yeah, I can speak Russian. I feel like it will be something will, will happen where she will find out from a third party that, yes, he can speak Russian. Because if Alia's sister and him end up actually reconnecting, because, again, I'm adamant that they are childhood friends. 
if they do end up recon like end up reigniting knowing each other's childhood friends, she should know that he knows how to speak Russian. And that's why I think she did the test way back, just to see if he'd play along. And when he played dumb, she kind of was like, mm, yeah, you're just, you're just pretending you don't know Russian. So I wonder if maybe she might let something slip. I don't know. It, clearly something's going to happen in like volumes 4, 4.5, because it's a 4.5 volume as well. I don't know what's in it. I just had to work out what volumes I can read up to date. So I'm really curious about that because I feel like that's going to be a major plot point later on is, of course, her finding out that he speaks Russian, but how that goes about, the, yeah, there's three ways it could go about it. His sister, sorry, not his sister, her sister will let something slip. His grandfather will let something slip, or he'll let something slip. But I don't think he's that stupid to let something slip. He's He thinks things through quite heavily. And the fact that his sister kind of strikes when he's sick and the fact that the maid technically drugged him oh boy oh boy i would actually be kind of annoyed by that i mean i get that she was playing a bit of a, a bit of a game there to try and get a leg up but that is kind of a really dirty tactic there giving him medication that he that she knew would have affected him much more making him much more drowsy just so that she could strike her while she while she was vulnerable it's like yeah that that's a bit of a low blow, but I get that that's how it works, and that's how he kind of sees it, but at the same time, it's like, damn, damn, you, you, the only time you can really strike Alia is when he's not there, because you know you, you can't beat him fair and square, that's, that's kind of how it feels, because at the end of the volume, she ended up losing anyway, really, she thought she had won it, but he turned everything around really well, which just showed that, yeah, he's capable of really reading the room, turning the room to his advantage, and I think that's what she really wants, she wants her brother back, because I see a lot of comments of people being like, oh, she's got like a sister complex, it's going to be like a harem, where she's going to chase her brother, no, again, I've stated this in my last videos, I do not see her being an actual proper love interest, she's faking to be a love interest, which I think is super clever in how they've done the writing there, because it's a fake love interest, she's pretending to be a love rival, and, well, at least to Alia, and I just like the way it's done like that, because from a reader's perspective, you know she's not an actual love rival, she just wants her old brother back, and that, that, that connection that they had with each other, that's what she wants, she wants that brother-sister bond that they had that doesn't mean it has to be romantic and it's clearly not going to be romantic I can see that and one thing I've noticed about the light novel is that they're very clear on how they want you to see things they're not trying to be overly cryptic to the point where it feels annoying but they're very clear on what they want you to see so it's not like it's trying to hide things and that's why I'm very very sure about the childhood friend thing because I'm like it's clearly shown it from the very beginning, or the early stages of the light novels, that, yeah, Alia's sister and Masa are childhood friends from the past, and I don't see her as a love rival either, I see her as trying to help Alia and him come together, I just do not see them as love rivals, I don't think that's what the author's trying to do, I mean, otherwise, maybe, and this is something I, I do remember reading in the light novels, is the grandfather made a comment about this, like, dream of, like, two wives, and I was like, what if, just what if he actually did marry both sisters? I'm like, it's just, it's just a what if scenario. You know what? If he did that, I'd actually would, like, take my hat off and be like, okay, that's good. That's good. That, that I actually will approve of that, because both sisters are pretty good, but it would be kind of weird, because he'd be like, okay, you've, you've married both, how are the sisters going to feel about it? It's, it's it's like a delusional idea of a what-if scenario, because I don't think that's going to ever happen, but it would be funny if it, if it did. If if that happened, I'd, I'd accept it, but I don't think that will happen. It's clearly between him and Alia, and I think her sister is going to help push them together, and his sister is going to also help push them together. It's just she just wants her old brother back, the one that she loved and cared about, in the, in the love sense of like a family love, that she just wants him. The real genius kind of manipulator, kind of mastermind kind of guy. That's what she wants back, because clearly he lost all motivation because of the family drama. 
and this va this volume does go into that family drama. It talks about the mother and how she really looked up, like she she cared about her son, and then just randomly like out of nowhere, and maybe we'll explain it more in the later volumes, just stopped really, like, communicating. And that was his whole drive to do all of these different things to achieve these great results because he wanted his mother's recognition, but never got it. And then they just kind of separated. And so, yeah, it's kind of sad when you really think about it because clearly he's got a lot of pent-up issues, and that's, that's the issue there, is that he doesn't have a drive as much, or he didn't have a drive, because his drive was his mother, to get approval from his mother. And he could no longer get that, so he stopped caring and stopped trying. And then you've got the one, the other grandfather that's like disapproval of, oh, he's wasted his talents. But it's like, yeah, but his motivation to try was his mother, and his mother stopped caring. It's like, how, what else is he meant to do? He's got nothing left. He, he's lost the one thing that he cared about. And it doesn't explain why, but I'm pretty sure it will. So now that he has a new motivation, which is Alia, and clearly he has feelings for her, and clearly she has feelings for him, that's his new motivation. That's what's driving him, and that's why I do not see his sister trying to break them up or trying to get in between them from a romantic standpoint. There's a difference between her loving her brother from a family side of things that's non-weird, and then it being weird like it's not the weird sense it's just she loves her brother she wants her old brother back and she sees that he is now motivated by his interest in Alia so she's like oh I now finally get my brother back and he's happy I'm gonna push them together they're gonna be a lovely little couple but of course she wants to play the villain role because she's a bit of an otaku and weirdo and I love her for that so that's how I see it because I've seen so many videos out there going, this is a harem. It's like, no, it's not a harem. Maybe we will see a little bit of maybe like old feelings from his childhood friend, Alia's sister. There might be some stuff there because I still do believe that that boyfriend that she apparently has is non-existent. I think it's an imaginary boyfriend. I'm very clear. I'm very sure of that. I think the last video, I think I mentioned it probably was like an inanimate object or something that she's just pretending is her boyfriend. And based on her past purchases, she seems to have an obsession with teddy bears. So it's probably a teddy bear that she's probably like, and this is the thing, the writer's pretty clear on throwing hints at, so I'm just like grabbing whatever hints I can think of. So maybe it's a teddy bear that she bought or he bought for her. And that's how it, it turned out. And that photo in that locket is probably him. Because they never show the, the image. And to be honest, why hide the image unless there's a very distinct reason? It's either two reasons. A, because they, they, they just don't want to waste time on showing the character. Which means that boyfriend is never going to appear. Which means they are of non-relevance in the story. Which means they either just don't exist or it's him. So I, I have a feeling that that kid in the locket is him. But I feel like they will resolve their past hi history and she will probably move on. Unless, yeah, it does turn into a bit of a love rivalry. But I just don't see her being like that because she really does care about Alia. And I just don't see her being that conniving and evil and being like, oh, by the way, love you, sis, but I'm going to take your boyfriend now. It just doesn't seem like her MO. Like I said, the only two outcomes is either... She pushes them together, or she jumps in, and it's two wives for the price of one. I'll take either of that. But I know adamantly that this, his sister is not going to... She just wants her brother back. That's it. And I don't blame her. She grew up with that brother. She did the original stuff with her brother, and that's what she wants back. Really love that. Again, it falls back to the same problem I did with Volume 2. I barely talk about what happens in the volume, and I talk about all the character stuff, because there's so many fun stuff to talk about, especially, like, the the, uh, the birthday drama with Masa. Like, he had his birthday, and she was kind of upset, Alia was, about the fact that she wasn't invited, but didn't realize that customs over there was that they don't really kind of celebrate birthdays, so they ended up going out on a little bit of a date. I thought that was really adorable, matching gifts, the teasing, the cake, all that kind of stuff. They are adorable. Absolutely adorable. And I do like the way they are slowly getting closer and closer and closer. And they are bridging that gap. Especially now at the end of this volume. They're on first names. And it does help at the fact that she talks in Russian. Which 
he actually really does love her talking in Russian. I think it's just because of his love for and because of his connection to his grandfather. So, yeah, really loving that part. I think overall, this is a great series. I love what they're trying to do with the story. I love what they're trying to do with the romance. And I just like the fact that they're not trying to create what I would call artificial speed bumps. And that's where, for example, and again, I like some of these series, but I do find them sometimes to be a little bit annoying, is like a Nesika, where you've got this massive long-running series, and they'll just add small speed bumps in between, where it's just kind of like, is it really needed? A great example would be Rent-A-Girlfriend, where they just throw speed bumps in for the sake of speed bumps, and it's just like, you get to a point where you're like, okay, you're just using this to artificially pad out the series. For this, they don't do that. You can clearly see the story progressing and building. And I don't see this being a long-running romance of, like, 20 volumes. I see this ending at, like, around, say, like, 12 volumes, give or take. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. I don't really see it going on for that too long. Because I feel like the story progresses at a good pace, where you feel like things are moving well so i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what do you think of volume three of alia sometimes hides her feelings in russian again the general cons the general path of this volume is of course you get the introduction to the grandfathers the breaking of the ice him trying to help her make friends in class you got the study group stuff you got the stripping that went on oh, see this is what i mean there's so much fun stuff that happens in this volume that i don't talk about like the stripping like where they do the hypnosis stuff and he him and his sister oh my god his sister is just she's a special kind of evil like diabolical evil in the funniest way where she's just like trying to poach like alia and her sister are like starting to strip and then he ends up being like lying on her nice mount everest's because i can't say the other word youtube and yeah there's this whole stripping stuff which will clearly happen in the anime so i'm really looking forward to that i just titled it on my notes as hypnotize undressing and then you've got the study group with the boys which is the mc grandfather and the two russian wives that's why i came up with that theory because it was brought up and when i read it i was like Oh, maybe maybe they're hinting at the idea of two Russian wives. It's just an idea. And then you've got the solo studying Alia rings. I'm uh, sorry, Masa rings. Well, that's true. No, <laughs> I'm getting my wires crossed. Alia rings Masa, and they have a conversation on the phone, which motivates him more. But he still ends up failing the original bet that they made, which was he had to get into a certain ranking, and then he could ask for any wish. But even though he loses, she gets the wish. But I think she kind of wanted him to win. But he knew what she wanted anyway, which was first name basis. So he throws that as a suggestion, and then they go with that. And then you've got the whole birthday drama, which I mentioned before, about how she felt like she was dis... Uh, not concluded disconcluded not a part of the whole like part of his life and that's the thing she really wants to learn more about him so there's clearly an interest there then you have that whole dinner thing the gifts the teasing the rest like that and as things go on you also then meet the other grandfather as well him getting sick the relationship between alia and her uh, him and then that's when the sister tries to strike that's when things really start to heat up at the end of the volume and the sister trying to provoke Alia. But even at the end, they have their little confrontation. They're still friends, but they realize that they're both trying to vie for a top position, so they have to play dirty. So that's what I find interesting, is that at the end of the day, even though they're going full at each other for the position, they are still willing to be friends at the end of it. But I wonder where that will go. So again, then you have the speech at the end. Everything plays out, first name basis. Very, very curious to see where volume four goes. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.